If you're like me and have an older vehicle, you may want to upgrade or replace your sound system with a brand new sound system that has navigation, Bluetooth, and many other features. So I'm going to be removing this one from the dash, installing a brand new system, and the difference between this system and the one I'm going to be installing, this is an older unit, so it does have a CD slot. The new one does not. The new system does not have a built-in navigation module. It's going to be using your smartphone with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The other thing with the new system, it's going to be sticking out further. It's going to have a much larger screen than you see here. The screen is going to go from this corner down to this corner. It's a 9-inch touchscreen. And it will also be adjustable, so you can angle it towards the passengers, people in the back seat, or more towards you. And having the feature of the screen sticking out a little bit further, I do like, because before I had to lean a little bit forward to touch the screen. The new one, I'll just lift my arm up and just touch the display to do any adjustments to the sound system. Once I install the new system in my vehicle, and you're going to see the steps of installation in a minute, we're going to power it up, test it out, take a look at the different features, take a look at the sound quality, and that way you'll know if it's something that you would be interested in for your vehicle. Before I get started popping off this trim around my sound system using this included tool, let's go inside and let me show you the sound system that I'm going to be installing. Right here is the CarPuride sound system I'm going to be installing in my vehicle. I posted a link in the video description area in the event you wanted to purchase this product after watching the video. This particular model has a 9 inch IPS touchscreen, FM, Bluetooth, USB, TF is the SD card, auxiliary input, microphone input, voice controls, along with high power output. When it's installed, the touchscreen will stick out a little bit in front of your dashboard in that double DIN opening. You can see here iPlay, AirPlay, AutoLink. Let's open it up, take a closer look at the product. This section here goes completely into your dash. Mine was actually recessed by about three quarters of an inch to an inch. So mine is gonna stick out about that far in front of my dashboard. And then you'll also have, as you can see, there's a swivel joint. So you can tilt the screen backwards, forwards, left or right. Right here's a look at the rear side of the unit. You have your antenna. This system also comes with a rear view camera. You can see our cam right here. If you'd like to add a front one, you can also add that. You have other options here. And you'll have two harnesses, which I'll show you in a minute, that plug in here and into this opening. At the top left corner is your power button close to the driver. And this whole screen will detach when you install this system in your vehicle. Also included is this manual. And in this manual, you'll see that it makes it very easy for connecting up the wiring to your vehicle. Of course, you may have to go online to pull up the wiring schematic for the harness in your vehicle so you can make these connections. I chose when I installed my previous sound system to just cut off the wiring because I knew what each wire went to and I simply connected it to the new harness for the sound system that I installed. But if you'd like, you can buy a wire harness adapter for your vehicle and it should have a little label on each one of the outputs identifying which each wire is. Once you have that harness in position, you can connect it to the harness included with this kit. Also included are two mounting brackets, this package right here, wire harness connector. This is the small one that plugs into the lower part of the sound system that you can see identified right here. Two harnesses, very clearly marked, so it makes it easy for you to connect. I'm going to be using butt splice connectors on these and everything you need to connect up the rear view camera which has night vision. Power connector, DC jack. Okay, let's go back outside. I'm going to remove the trim around my radio 
and remove the old system. So let's take this trim tool, carefully reach in, remove this, and when I remove this, I'm gonna have to reach inside, disconnect the harness going to the climate control, as well as this temperature gauge. Let me do that, and then once it's out of the way, we'll take a closer look at the sound system. Take the four screws out. Okay, this is just a ground wire. Went around that screw for me. Pull this out. Okay. So right here, my antenna. This goes to my camera. The old wire harness that I'm going to have to cut off. It has all the labels already on it because I've replaced this once. And this one here goes to a GPS antenna, which I'm no longer going to be using because the new sound system is going to be using your smartphone. Okay. So with the radio out of the way, you can see the old harness that was connected in using these butt splice connectors. I'll know exactly where each one of these wires goes on the new harness. To make it easier to install, what you do here is there's a little button. You're going to slide this button, and then when you slide that, you can grab this, and it will pull out. Now the screen has been separated from the unit. Let me get all of this trimmed off and the labels moved over and connect up the new harness. Okay, so here is the new harness all connected up. You see all the labels right here. They match up perfectly with the labels that I had on my wiring from the Planet Audio. Like I said earlier, if you don't want to cut off your harness, simply buy a harness adapter or you can go online and see exactly what each one of those wires goes to from your harness so you can cut the harness off and connect it directly. Now I like these crimp connects. I've never had any problem over the years using them. If you live within a mile of the ocean, then I suggest you use heat shrink connectors on your connections. The next thing I'm going to do is temporarily plug in the sound system, push it into that opening just to make sure everything works. Right here you can see the installation for the new camera above my license plate. It was very easy to install following the instructions in the manual. In case you're wondering, the reason why I did not use this six pin connector that was included with this kit, because I do not have switches on my steering wheel to control the radio, and I also do not have a front camera installed. Okay, I turned this on, went through all the different functions, the reverse camera, and everything works. What I'm going to do now is put all the trim back on around the system, and then after that, I'm going to come back and we're gonna go over all of the features of this system so you can see what it looks like. Okay, here it is, all put back together, and I have to say, I really like the way it looks. I like the fact that the screen is more forward, sticking out off the dash like a lot of newer vehicles, and it's also a lot easier for me when I'm trying to reach for the screen. I don't have to lean forward because it's more towards me. So before I power this up and go through everything that it can do, let me slide this button to the right, pop the screen off, and take a closer look at the unit itself. Right over here, you can see your USB connection, type A. This port right over here is a microphone port. If you wanna plug in an external microphone instead of using the one that's on the screen. The top one here is an auxiliary input. And right over here, you have your SD micro. I'm going to be plugging this one in right here Nice. On this card, I have a couple of video files. I want to make sure they play off the card once I put everything back. And there we are, fully engaged. Now let's power up the system. Up here at the top left, you have Home. That brings you to the screen you see here with the analog clock. At the bottom, you have radio, phone, Bluetooth music, USB. You have an SD card, which I just inserted a minute ago. You have AVN, 
You have a front camera if you want to. I don't. I have a rear camera only. And over here is a settings menu. We'll go over all these in a minute. So let's go back to the home. Over here is sound. You can slide this with your finger to adjust the volume. Equalizer. The sound quality is excellent. Let's go back. Up here is Android Auto. So you can use CarPlay if you have an Apple device, but the Android Auto and everything with my Samsung Galaxy works perfectly with this system. There's nothing that does not work. That's indicating Bluetooth is connected with the check mark. If there was no connection, it would show an X. What I do like about this screen here, touch that, it makes it dimmer without having to go into the brightness settings for at night. So at night, you don't want to have this too bright in your vehicle. So all you would have to do is just touch that button. It goes from evening to daytime. You can see the wallpaper in the background. Touch this button here, changes it. There's probably four. Yeah, it's about four different ones. I'll leave it there. Over here, if you touch this, tells you how to connect iPlay, wired or wireless. This one here explains how to do AirPlay. Over here, this opens the navigation window. In my case, using Android Auto. This turns the microphone on. I would like to go to the nearest gas station. Wawa is five minutes from your location by car in light traffic. And this thing works fantastic. So I would just touch this. And it's going to guide me to the destination perfectly as she speaks to you to give you the directions. Now I'm going to X that out. Don't have to do it. Over here, you could search. Any text messages that arrive on my phone as I'm driving, just tap right there. I can see them right here as well as respond. Let's go back. Let's go back again. Over here, you can see this calendar features. No events today to date. Let's go back. Let's go one more. Different games you could play. Let's go back again. You have maps, messages, messenger, news, phone, Skype, more settings, podcasts, WhatsApp, and you can customize it. Click here to customize, and it tells you what to do if you want to add or remove different apps. So let's go back here. Now I'm going to exit out. Back to here again. Any kind of a problem, you touch the help at the top right. And you can see right here, it shows you the email address for support. Okay, so now what I want to do, radio works fine. Let me lower it first. It's going to blast if I don't. Let's put it down. To, let's put it down. Let's over to three. The best variety of the 2000s, tons, and today. It's going down. I'm so as you can see, that works extremely well. Bluetooth music works great. Tested it. What I want to do now is go over to... Let's go over to the card. Oh, cool. So this is working good. This is showing you that it plays these files. And this one happens to be an MP4. Here's the video playlist. So MP4 works on here. Let's try flash video. Yep, flash video works great. Get out of here again. Let's try MKV. So MKV also works. It's 
So let's get out of here. So front camera I don't have, AV in, whatever you have that you want to also use with the system, you can plug it into that port. Settings, language, English, Chinese, Spanish, German, French, Italian, and Japanese. Right now I'm connected to Android Auto. If I would like to mirror my phone, I would switch to Auto Link. Let's go back. Wi-Fi on off, two different channels. And down here, SWC, steering wheel controls. You could program the system to learn buttons. Let's get out of here. Video warning. I don't know what video warning is. Uh, park line. Oh, park line is when you're backing up with the camera, which I'm going to show you in a minute. You can adjust the lines exactly for your vehicle so you don't bump into anything. And right here's your park line setting. So you can grab this and move it. You can get really close to a wall or a car and make sure that the red is not going to be touched so you know how far you can go and you can move these into the position that you want. And I can do close. Over here it says rear camera mirror and front camera mirror. Not too sure what that does. I turned it on, I didn't notice anything different. It sounds like the purpose of this, which I'm unsure because it doesn't mention it in the manual, but when you turn this on and off, I would imagine that a screen would come up, a smaller one, showing you what's behind the vehicle as you're driving, so you do not have to look in your rear view mirror. Nothing else there. Okay, so let's get out of this screen. Right here you can see the reverse camera activated. The last thing I'd like to do is connect up this right here, auto link, plug this back in. You're going to want to install Auto Link Pro on your smartphone if it's a Android. My phone is connected. I could just put the phone down, I could put the backlight all the way low and just use this. So that works perfectly for mirroring your phone to this screen. Now if I want to get out of here, I could just touch here and I'm back out and I'm just going to go onto my phone and disconnect. And that is it. So now you know what to expect with this system here. It is definitely nice and everything works. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up and share. Thanks for watching.